Good morning. Thank goodness I'm not on bit shoot because I just woke up and I didn't comb my hair. And lose flash to any women or the other opposite sex because I only believe in this many. Um, so does Mother Nature. Uh, not all women want to look like they're ready to be uh, paid for and bought. You know what I mean? So we don't all put makeup on. High-heeled shoes, by the way, are torture devices. I won't wear any shoes that I can't run away from somebody in or potentially kill them with. So there is a place for stilettos as long as they can be taken off and wielded. That little heel there had better be metal and sharp. Speaking of sharp, I have gone through uh, several days uh, in which I haven't been feeling so good. And it has nothing to do with anything other than the plateau. Have you ever been on a diet? I have, it's the only time I ever gained weight. It's better for me never to die with a T. But um, it's like you, you've heard of the plateau. So the plateau is when you've lost your weight and then you're on that plateau and you get on that scale and no matter how much you try, no other weight's going off, right? Well, the same applies to, ta-da, drum roll, spiritual and development and personal empowerment. You will reach a plateau, my friends. And that plateau will be very frustrating because apparently it's what happens with personal growth. And some of us go up these steps. We have this wonderful growth and then we're on a plateau. I'm on that plateau. So uh, there is a lot going on in the world and I'm not concerning myself with it. But I will tell you, the world infiltrates my dreams. And so I woke up in my dream, of course it was lucid, and I'm having a discussion with some people and this woman wants to know if I am uh, going to vote. And she uh, wants to know my position. Now, I'm smart enough to know you never talk religion or politics with anybody who already has a formed opinion, nor do you talk to a person who already, not only do they have a formed opinion, they're ready to fight you to the death about it or something like it. I don't have nothing to do with that. Thank you very much. Not interested. I am, I view this world as a trap of sorts. I also view it as a school. Uh, we're equipped, we're designed. We have these bodies. They, they are perfect for this environment. We're carbon based creatures. Ha! What's the difference between organic and inorganic chemistry? Class, anybody? It's the carbon molecule. Yes, you guessed it. So this is the other thing I'm putting in my, my smoothie drink. I'm upping my protein. This one is uh, a bunch of mushrooms and it, you can now get it at Whole Foods. And I will never be ordering this again because it was sent to me by mistake and these are very expensive, very expensive. Um, so expensive that I now know I will not be getting them anymore. But I was getting mushroom coffee from Ohm Mushroom and I was getting, um, oh gosh, hold the phone. I apologize, but these things happen. I told you I was on the plateau. That means I'm not making any forward progress, seemingly, but I'm not going backwards either. So I'm on the plateau and I hit a lot of breakthroughs. Uh, let's go back to the story. I'll seam it up and then we're gonna go back to what I'm talking about in the plateau and personal growth and development because everybody knows that's following my channel. I am a narc abuse escapee and my whole entire channel is on surviving a childhood-based uh, mind control 
that also created a lack of development in circuit, certain key things like communication. And that's where I'm going to tie back to my dream. And that communication is and conversation are essential for healthy adult relationships. And in fact, narcissists do not have them unless they're asking you questions, acting all interested in the love bombing part of the relationship in which they actually listen to you. And you think, oh, this is heavenly. Well, it's temporary. And that stair step goes backwards and it goes down, spirals into hell. Now I don't have any, uh, what do you call it? Fruits or vegetables to put in this. I don't do kale raw. Never do spinach raw. If you if you know what ox, oxaflates do or whatever those uh, phthalates or oxaf whatever they are, they actually raw spinach. Cook spinach. The only kind of spinach to have. But then it coats your teeth and makes you feel like you have a coating. It doesn't have a color. It has a coating. So communication is essential, and it's one of those things that you learn to do when you're uh, being raised by sane parents who aren't brainwashing you or trying to make themselves feel better about themselves by making you as little as possible by giving children who don't know better insults and letting them know how intelligent they are because you are the almighty big one. So my narc mother, I refer to her as Ombo. Oh, mighty big one. And that's the name I used to stay sane when I was a child. I used comedy. And if you lose your humor on this planet, other than health, you lose everything. If you can't laugh, you're already in hell. And we already know life can be hell. And we already know earth is occupied by the demons. They exist. Hello. One's on one shoulder, the demon. And you got your Help her on the other and guess which one's louder. The bombastic ombo. Mm, they're just like narcissists. Once you recognize their, their voice inside of your head, you can say, uh, you're a liar and you can go away now. Give them a job to do. Count the hairs on the cat, whatever. Count the fibers on the, on the, the rug over there, whatever. Communication's essential. You'll never have it with a narcissist except when they're love bombing you. They'll ask you questions about you just so they can figure you out so they can mirror you. And then later in the relationship, they will degrade you and they will use everything you ever told them against you. Yeah, woohoo! That's what they'll do. Filter your water. If you're drinking tap water now, you're crazy. And if you want to know about boron and what it does about the fluoride, because you can't get out, get it out because it's a tenacious molecule. Because those mofos who run this planet want to degrade your body, and there's many ways they do it. This is not medical advice. I'm not a doctor, but they will use every means possible to degrade your body and your mind. So the tell lie vision sets one of them. So the lucid dream, all right, I woke up in this lucid dream and this woman is like, wants to know who I'm going to vote for and she's pushing it. And I go, you know, listen, I'm not political. It's not anything that I really care about. And she pushed me. And so, uh, meaning I wanted to, I could have continued to refuse her, but even in the dream, I'm amused. So I said, well, I'm testing her. Uh, ring past knot in her head and I go um well you know political parties it's really two sides of the same coin and then she goads me with another leading question and she's got this auric field of like all puffed up and she's trying to push me into a corner and I said I'm not an anarchist our government is what keeps things going I don't have to like the government I don't have to like what state employees do I don't have to like eminent domain. I don't have to like the corporations that are running everything, including cities. I don't have to like any of it, but I don't care who's in office. It's all the same. And cities, guess what? 
They're going to be democratic forever because they have to have social services for whatever reason. The only sane move, if you can afford it, and I can't, is living in the country. So I make fun of people while I live in a city and I see what goes on. But you know what you got to do? When you take a shit in the toilet, do you look at it? No, you flush it. Well, that's what I do anyway. Do you smell it? Do you go like this with your nose? No, you don't stick your nose in your own shit more than you would stick your nose in somebody else's. Unless you've got some sort of weird fetish. And I don't know anybody like that, thank goodness. <laughs> Speaking of, this looks like a mm, chocolate, but it's uh, not. That'll do. Mmm, wow. Mmm, that's good. I take that back. That mushroom thing is good. It's got like a cinnamon taste to it. But I gotta get going. I had to get a part-time job to have more people in my life. I was getting bored. And I got a job amongst people who, guess what they do? They don't speak about religion or politics. My kind of people. And if anybody tries to get my opinion out of me, I just smile at them. You don't have to answer anything. You don't have to be goaded into anything at all. So it worked in the dream. I was very amused. I laughed at it and I woke up laughing. And that's when I realized we have to take that kid a soft glove approach with ourselves and be very forgiving with ourselves because God knows Ombo put in our heads that voice of judgment that goes on and on and on telling you what kind of person you are. And then here I am, I put myself out in public I talk about how it's much better for a woman over 50 be, to be single than with a mediocre man, but it's not just a mediocre man. It's a man that degrades your life. Single or with a man who degrades your life? Hmm? Single. Solo. It's a shining opportunity and to lovingly overlook my life myself. Solo. It stands for something else, but for now, that's what came into my head. <laughs> oh, yeah. Get a cup of cup of something. I'm going to drink now because I have to go. I'm on the clock soon. I haven't worked for somebody on the clock since 2004. Yeah. 20 years ago. 20 years on my own time, on my own dime, doing my own thing. 20 years. So, how long have I have been without a man in my life messing it up? Uh, October 2021 was the last time we were physically together. And he harassed me until, as a narc is, I led him to what he needed to do, which is break up with me to make his ego feel better so that it would be sealed. And then... He tried to get back into my life again in August of <laughs> 2022. Ugh. He goes walking by my uh, patio where I go outside to look at the birds and, and hear them tweeting. And he walks by and he goes, well, cat, we've had so much life together. We did 11 torturous years. Uh, maybe three months were good. And, um, I'll go into the cycle of narcissistic abuse and why you keep going back later. I'm not going to go into that SHIT right now. I'm talking about the plateau. I'm talking about communication. I'm talking about my newfound ability to actually have a conversation or avoid one. So he comes walking by and he uh, goes, what I just said, I don't know why we don't stay in each other's lives. 11 years uh, we had together and, and uh, you know, we should stay in touch. And I said, well, I can think of one really good reason why we shouldn't do that. It's because I'm so much happier without you in my life. Fact, fact. There's no denying facts. You can't argue with facts. And in my plateau, I discovered a new level 
of learning, which has blown my mind. And since I have to stitch my mind back together again with gold, because <laughs> I am the creator of spiritual kintsugi, since my mind is blown to bits, I have to piece them together again <laughs> so that I can provide you with some golden nuggets of information and wisdom to help you in your life on uh, in your little slice of heaven that you create in hell, Dante's Inferno. So I'm climbing out of hell. I'm getting my stair step and now I'm going this way. Then you go up again. So that's your stair step, whatever. And <clears throat> I'm on a plateau, but I'm still inching towards the next step. So in your personal growth and development, it doesn't mean you're not going to have a bad day. It doesn't mean you cry over spilt milk. God knows I cuss my parents out and I tell my mother how much I hated what she did to me. And I teach people and I'm teaching you now. You go back and in that place, in that memory of what that person did, of how they neglected you, rejected you, corrected you, ben ben uh, demeaned you. And then punished you for being you. You do all of that. You, you go, huh, I was dealing with an ombo, almighty big one. I was dealing with somebody who was bigger than me, smarter than me, could do more than me because they were older and more experienced than me. They could beat me up. They could hit me across the face if I said something that I intuitively knew to be true. And boy, did I learn to keep my mouth shut. But truth is truth with a capital T. And ombos, which are usually uh, people who are pathologically narcissistic, are actually demonically influenced. They don't have to drink alcohol to be ugly. That demon is right there, ready to take anybody that's good to the cleaners, if you let them. They want to degrade and denigrate and, and, and make you a terrible human being just for your existence. Imagine that, just for your beautiful existence, because that's what they do. Do you really think a demon wants a child of God or of creator or of love or whatever, this beautiful, consciousness that's incarnate in this body do you really think a demon wants that beautiful being to live a happy fruitful life here in the devil's playground no but i'll have you know earth is also our playground only we have to seek higher ground which is why you go up the steps jacob's ladder mm Hmm. I'm going to uh, end this because I'm on the clock and I have to get going. And I am leaving you with this. No matter how terrible your past was, you can't change it. But you can go back into the past and rewire and reframe what happened so that you know what really was going down and how stupid your parents are or were and how cruel and selfish and insidious those narc partners were. But remember, you're a bleeding flesh in the water and they're a shark. And it's a shark's nature to attack you and eat you. It's a narc's nature to destroy you while they will be telling you that you're the awful person and that you are trying to destroy them. Mm -mm. Doesn't work like that. So <clears throat> the other thing I'd like to fortify you with and you're going to be like, what the F did I do that for? Just maybe on the other side, because reincarnation is real. You don't just have this one life. And if you still think that way, uh, maybe you should keep your mind a little bit more open. 
We've been on this rodeo ride, this hamster wheel, several times. And now is our time. In our lifetime, we're coming to an end of a cycle. But you just have to keep going until 2027. The year 2028 is the one I'm looking forward to. I'm staying single until 2028. I am not going to let another man touch my body except to shake it. And of course, I have my son and I hug him. That's all. So conversations, the art of conversation. We're going to talk about Eric Erickson's um, eight stages of development, specifically ages three through uh, 18. Uh, those are very important. So my mother fucked me up in 15 years of her life. Um, and yet I see her now and I realize why she did what she did. She's just like all those commenters on BitChute. They just invent shit in their minds uh, and they want to bitch at you. Bitch oot. <laughs> but here's to actually owning the fact that you are a child of God, that you have a right to be here, that it's your playground too. And if you don't like what's happening where you are, take your toys and go someplace else. Protect your body, protect your field, accept where you are, go through your grief, piece yourself together, and recognize that the golden human, the child of, of creation, is you. And let the narc self-destruct, because I guarantee you, they will. And do you want to go down with that? Or do you want to at least be on a plateau looking for the next place to step up? Here's to that.